Water. There's something about being around a body of water. As a kid, I loved wandering into streams to discover all types of life that lived under the rocks. These waters are teeming with life. Water is also a symbol of life, motion, renewal, and to make new again. In essence, water cleanses and purifies by washing away the dirt. This week's verse is Matthew 28, verse 19. Our core church value this week is mission. We are to be the hands and feet of Christ. Matthew 28, 19 reads, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thinking about the life-giving waters that run through streams, I began to think about the life-giving stream that runs in each of us. This week's science moment, I thought it'd be fun to look at the river that flows through each of us and that life-giving stream of blood that is propelled by our heart through our body. Our heart is about the size of our fist. Did you know the first open heart surgery was performed in 1893? It was performed by a Dr. Daniel Hale Williams, who was one of the few black cardiologists in the country. Early Egyptians used to think that our organs inside our bodies had their own mind and that they would float throughout the body and move about. Our heart weighs about 11 ounces. That's less than a pound. And during our lifetime, our heart will beat 1 to 1.5 billion gallons of blood. That circulates through our body. That's about enough to fill about 200 tanker cars. You know those tanks that get pulled by trains? Those are the tanker cars, about 200 of them. Our heart beats from four weeks once we are conceived in our mother's womb until the day we die. Um, and our heart beats about 100,000 times a day. So let's take a look at this amazing organ, our heart. Here we have a mural of our heart and our heart has four great rooms, two upper rooms and two lower rooms. The upper rooms are called atrium, just like an entryway into a hotel. And that's where the blood enters the heart and the two bottom rooms are our ventricles. So blood comes in on the right side of our heart and it comes into our right side of our um, heart with our right atrium, goes through to our right ventricle, up, pump through our pulmonary arteries into our actual lungs where it's oxygenated. Once the blood gets oxygenated, it comes back um, into our, our, right, our left side of the heart in the left atrium to our left ventricle, and it gets pumped through the biggest artery in our body called the aorta. Now, when the blood circulates, not only are we taking in oxygen, we're getting rid of carbon dioxide. This is a gas that's a waste product. We don't need it. But what's cool how God has designed us is that trees and plants need carbon dioxide. And the trees and plants give us oxygen. It's a pretty remarkable thing. The other thing you might notice is your aorta is the biggest vessel in your body. If you ever laid on your back, and kind of as your breathing looked at your stomach as you laid down, you might see it pulse up and down. That's actually your a branch or the bottom part of your aorta called the abdominal aorta that beats and pulsates with each part beating of your heart. Pretty cool, huh? So the purpose of the circulatory system is that it's kind of like the pizza delivery guy and the garbage man all together. As this stream of blood flows through our body, through the vessels that it is contained in, um, important nutrients and oxygen is given off to tissues, and the waste that the tissues produce, like our different organs in our body, are exchanged into the blood to be getting rid of. So the major things is that our blood is the internal seed to moisten our cells. It brings nutrients and oxygen to the cells, and like I said before, it removes all the waste products. It controls cell activity by bringing hormones and enzymes to the cell. 
So right now, especially when you're sleeping, you're growing. And those hormones are released from your pituitary in your brain. And those hormones travel through your bloodstream that help you to continue to grow, amongst many other hormones. Um, our blood also defends us from disease. It helps regulate our temperature and it maintains homostasis. Wow, that's a big word, which it means it balance. Our body is held in a very particular balance that our cells, our brain, and our hearts thrive through. So our blood is that life-giving stream that runs through us. Have you ever thought of how much blood actually is in our body? Well, most people say a whole lot, right? But it's not as much as you think. If we take the average size of an adult, let's say 170 to 180 pound person, how much blood do you think is in our body? Well, I have a little bit of an illustration. Right here is a two liter bottle, right here. And I have it halfway filled. So that's about a liter, correct? And then if I take another bottle, you can see that it's full up the top. That's two liters. Two plus one, that's three liters. And then finally, if we take one more bottle, that's additional two liters. So two liters plus two liters and one liter is about five liters. That is about the amount of blood that's in an adult. Well, for you, you're probably much smaller than an adult. You may only have three liters of blood inside you. So that's a really important thing. So what exactly is contained in our blood? There are many small components in our blood. I have a little picture here. And this actually shows the major components of our blood. The first and ubiquitous means a large amount of it in our blood is plasma. It's a straw colored solution. Um, proteins and other things are dissolved in this plasma and it's predominantly water, about 92%. I bet you've seen your plasma before. Have you ever been running outside and you skin your knee and initially it starts to bleed? But once the bleeding stops, you see this yellowish, clearish fluid that kind of drains from the wound. That is actually plasma. Another component of our blood are red blood cells. That's what gives our blood its color. It has the hemoglobin, which is an iron that gives it a nice, beautiful red color. We also have something called white blood cells. They're globules that float around, and those are our soldiers. They're always floating around our body, surveilling, looking for any intruders that it may attack um, that may make us sick. And lastly, we have things called platelets. They're almost like star-shaped, kind of irregular shaped, and they flow along any time that you have a cut or if the lining of your vessel gets um, um, cut in any way, it will stick and that's what helps kind of close up the wound. So all these things are really important in your blood. The heart is probably the most mentioned organ in the Bible. Back in those days when the Bible was written, they didn't know a lot about the human body, but the heart had the utmost important. Actually, heart is mentioned the third highest time in the Bible. It is mentioned about 725 times in the Bible. That's in third place behind the word Lord and God. Pretty amazing. And so there were many images in the Bible of what the heart represented. I've got a couple examples here, some verses, parts of verses. It says in the Bible, this is just a few examples, seek God with all your heart. The Lord searches every heart. Do not lose heart. Set my heart. Keep your heart wise. Guard your heart. Write them on your heart. Integrity of heart. Upright in heart and hardened his heart. Pretty amazing how God is, we talk about the Bible and, and God and his uh, love for our heart and how our hearts can be renewed. Have you ever thought about what your heart sounds like? I've actually got a guest who would love to show you exactly what our heart sounds like. Give me a moment. As I promised, 
I have a visitor. Shh, he's sleeping. Okay, not really. Looks real, but actually this is a simulator. A simulator is something that doctors and nurses and health professionals use to help train and learn how to care for people. This is a neonatal, which is another name for baby, simulator. And you can see the baby's got still got its umbilical cord. Um, what's neat about this baby is that I can actually put blood into some of the tubes and we could actually do IVs. So I actually have an IV over there that you can see. So this baby's mouth is open. So then we can do different kinds of procedures and learn on it. But what I have my baby here for is that we can actually listen to real heart and lung sounds. Let's take a listen. I have my stethoscope here and we are going to take a listen. It's different from my other stethoscope. This one's special because this baby's got electronics in it. But take a listen. A lot of times when I'm listening to patients, I close my eyes, just like you're praying. And when I close my eyes, it helps me to concentrate on the sounds better. So this is a normal heartbeat for a baby. One of the things that's really important as a doctor is to know what is normal and to tell the difference, but also to be able to listen well and hear when things might not be so right. You just heard what a normal heartbeat sounds like. Let's take a listen to something that might not sound quite the same. So normally we hear the lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. That's the opening and closing of the valves. But there's an extra sound here. Do you hear it? Sounds like a blowing sound. We have the love dub sound, but there's a shh in between. That is something we would call a murmur. And so this is actually the sound of what we would call as a hole in the heart, where the blood is going between um, two spaces in the heart that isn't normally there. So it's pretty amazing what you can do, even as a doctor, of just listening, just like we are to listen to God. We've gotten to listen to a heart. How about we take a look at a heart? I have a couple of heart specimens and they're actually real. The first heart I'm gonna show you is an actual sheep heart. I like using sheep hearts because a sheep heart is about the same size as our heart. And because God is a great designer, he uses a lot of the similar characteristics in designing us as he does animals. And then the second one, I have a little surprise. So let's take a look, I got my gloves on. I have my tools here. And the first heart I'm gonna pull out is an actual sheep heart. And like I said, our heart or my heart is about the size of my fist, just like yours. So this heart is probably about the same size as my heart. And you can see Although this is not the brilliant red, because there's no blood that's going through this heart, this is an actual real specimen. And so this is the front of the heart, and you can see this kind of brown tissue, which is actually the muscle of our heart, and then there's fat. This is not bad fat, this fat actually protects the heart inside the torso, in our thorax, where the heart stays. And if I open up the heart, you can actually see some of the chambers and spaces. But you know what? It's kind of hard to see it in this small heart. I've got another example. I'm getting it, it's coming. I have an actual calf heart, much bigger than the sheep heart that we've seen but I find that it's a little easier to see some of its anatomy. Right here at top, you'll see that there's this tube, hollow tube here. This is actually the aorta, that big blood vessel um, I was talking about earlier on. Let's take a look inside. OK, 
Can you see it there? Couple of the things that you'll see is um, up here is the atrium and down here we have a valve. The valve is like a doorway. It keeps the blood flowing in one direction. So between the atrium and ventricles, there are doorways or valves. Also, you'll see here is the ventricle. Do you see those strings? Those strings are called the cord attendee. There was a real common um, saying, especially when I used to hear when I was a little girl, not as common today, but people would say, don't pull on my heartstrings, meaning you're making me sad. But the heartstrings that they were referring to is actually the cord attendee. Now it's time for our at-home activity. This one, I'm sure, will really get you. It's awesome. So we're going to actually make fake blood. What you need for your fake blood is you need corn syrup. A lot of times I'll use like a K-Roll, the clear syrup. You will need food coloring, red food coloring, and blue food coloring. A bowl to stir up your items. A measuring spoon and some cornstarch. So you will take one tablespoon of corn syrup, pour it into your bowl, measure it out, and then take about 15 drops of red food coloring, and then about a one to two drops of blue food coloring, and mix it into your corn syrup. After that, you'll take one tablespoon of cornstarch and pour it in there, and mix it all up, and you'll get a very lovely, viscous, blood-looking, syrupy thing. Now, what you do, what I love to do, which is fun, you can't just make blood and not have anything. If you have some toilet paper, what works really well is you'll take a little scoop of your little syrup and kind of rub it onto your skin. And then you'll take some toilet paper, just a little small piece, and stick it onto there. And you can even use a Q-tip to move the toilet paper around to make it look like a really cool woo. You can put some on your face or whatever, impress your friends. Have fun with that. I'm gonna really try to keep myself together this time, but now it's time for corny jokes. Why, did a, why are mosquitoes religious? <laughs> because they prey on you. <laughs> Why are vampire families so close? Because blood is thicker than water. Where do vampires keep their savings? <laughs> and, and, and blood banks. <laughs> My last one, this one's awesome. I got this one. In what do vampires cross the sea? In blood vessels. Each week I've had so much fun hanging out with you with our science moment. I wish our time didn't have to end, but I want to leave you with just one final question. What is meant about being the hands and feet of Christ? How do we do that? <laughs> Your circulatory system is a marvelous invention of God's. I hope that each day, as you walk and look around at God's creation, that you will continue to magnify the wonder.